Well, you don't know who's going to get questioned next because you don't. You, you were in incidents yourself, but you don't know who's going to get questioned about what. So, like, you're always waiting. Effectively, uh, we are seeing what we believe are malicious prosecutions of veterans. Good morning. My name is Mike Hook and I'm the member of the European Parliament for Yorkshire and North Lincolnshire. Uh, I'm the... Hey, up there. <laughs> and I'm a spokesman for the party on the Veterans, uh, veterans Affair. For those who have served in the armed forces, often describe the bonds as, shell, as like being part of a large family. And like all families, it's a time of adversity and the bonds of true solidarity and brotherhood are put to the test. That way it's, it fills me with such pride to see so many of you here today. For it's our experiences, our common cause and our loyalty that bonds us together like few other groups. And it proves that it's not only the provisional IRA who can live by the motto, once in, never out. No words can reflect the random brutality of the fighting nor the mental and physical scars that veterans took away from the conflict in Northern Ireland and often carry to this day. And whether you call it the Troubles, the conflict or Operation Banner, what happened in Northern Ireland was nothing less than war. <laughs> war is a dirty, brutal business. No matter the legal definition you give it, and over nearly 40 years the Troubles in Northern Ireland claimed more than three and a half thousand lives. Over half the casualties were civilian due to as asymmetric warfare tactics employed by the terrorists. However, of the combatants, for every paramilitary killed, two members of the armed forces and security services lost their lives. And while I mourn the members of our brave forces, I remain unapologetic for the deaths of terrorists who had criminally taken up arms to force a change the majority in Northern Ireland did not want. As far as I'm concerned, those who live by the gun often die by the gun. And that is why it's so disgusting that veterans now face prosecution. But rather than being thanked, veterans today live in fear of a knock at the door to be asked questions about the events of a lifetime ago. And the odds of being targeted in this post-conflict witch hunt seems to be growing. Only last week I was speaking to a veteran who was a hair trigger away from shooting a bystander at a parade, who pointedly said it could quite easily have been me. The fact is, this is nothing more than a continuation of the conflict by other means but with the scales of justice weighed in favour of the terrorists. And let's not forget, we now have a leader of the Labour Party who not only sympathises with violent republicanism, he also invited IR representatives to the Commons a fortnight after the Brighton bombing and stood for a moment's silence for IRA terrorists killed in an SAS, SAS ambush. This same man who refused to condemn the IRA could not even be bothered this week to find out if an injured policeman shot in the latest terrorist incident was still alive. So I ask you, what is the good of applying a rose-tinted retrospectoscope to events of 30, 40 years ago? Actions like this do nothing more than to open all wounds at a time when we should be building on the tentative peace we achieved. However, instead of letting sleeping dogs lie, the justice system in the UK has once again swung its politically correct weight behind investigating and prosecuting old men who bravely fought to secure this country against terrorism. Under the Good Friday Agreement, up to 500 terrorists walked free from prison. Many of those released had committed heinous crimes Yet we were at all it was necessary to build goodwill, as peace could only be attained through compromise. But today, that compromise, 
is a one-way street that allows terrorists to walk free while former soldiers face prosecution and jail. It's a bloody outright disgrace. And where will it end? No surrender. How long will it be before we start seeing investigations into operations such as Bosnia, Kosovo or Afghanistan? We already have one Royal Marine, Sergeant Alex Blackman, serving a sentence for an act perpetrated in war, but prosecuted and punished by the standards of civilians. The way Sergeant Blackman has been treated is, however, symptomatic of a wider problem when it comes to handling the veterans' affairs. Too often today, instead of being lauded as heroes, veterans are thrown to the wolves and decried by parts of society pushing their agenda. Take veteran homelessness, for example. In 2013, a newspaper reported 9,000 veterans were homeless in the UK, but this report was largely derided and eventually discredited. However, from speaking to charities working in this area, I know this problem is very real, especially with hidden homelessness. And this pattern is repeated in many aspects of veteran care, with agencies choosing not to implement the rights of veterans given to them by the Armed Forces Covenant. It's a disgrace and one I'm committed to tackling head on. So here today, I will make a promise to the UK's five million veterans and their families that I will not rest until we no longer see veterans sleeping on the streets, until veterans can access until veterans can access the medical care and services some need to rebuild their lives post-service. Until the Armed Forces and Community Covenant is not only made fit for purpose, but is also implemented across the nation with the spirit it's intended. And until veterans no longer face the threat of prosecution and imprisonment for doing their jobs and protecting the realm. Thank you. Thank you. Well done.